I wanted some on-camera and voice acting tips, so I decided to ask a pro. I'm amazed at the people I meet in my travels, both out in the world and on the internet. I recently ran into a really cool guy. His name is Craig Burnett. He's a TV host and voiceover artist with over 30 years in the business. Odds are you've seen or heard him. He's pretty famous. And that's not 10 nights in a row. You can accumulate them over time at hotels all around the world. We're here at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. As you can hear, the engines have started and we're just about ready to go. This is the Rolly Kit. It's one of the most incredible inventions to ever come along. It takes considerable time and effort to craft books bound in genuine leather. For nearly 30 years, our scientists have been developing the next breakthrough in dental technology. It's how they can save on gasoline by using a revolutionary new product. It seems like nobody ever prepares for a flat tire. Old friend of yours who wants to stop by and say hello. Hello, Joy! Greg Burnett! Rich in silver content, rich in American history. I asked him if he would share some tips on voiceovers and on-camera acting with my viewers, and much to my surprise, he said he would. My first question is, what advice would you give to people being in front of the camera for the first time? Is there some secret trick? Well, the biggest trick is to be yourself. Too many times people pretend to be someone they're not when they're in front of a camera. If you're trying to impart information or make a connection with your audience, the best way to do that is to do it as though you're talking to one person. Sometimes it helps to imagine your best friend as the person you're talking to. I really like this tip. When I started my channel, I was trying to act in front of the camera, having no experience whatsoever, and it looked terrible. Breathing is also really important. Too many times people are reading from a teleprompter go faster and faster and faster and forget to breathe properly. Well, your brain needs the oxygen to process information and then spit it out again. Taking a few deep breaths before you start, including immediately before you begin speaking, will help your brain do the work, like this. Taking a few deep breaths before you start, including immediately before you begin speaking, will help your brain do the work. This would have never occurred to me. Many times I'm ripping through a script and by the end, I just feel exhausted. Uh, little did I know, I just needed to breathe. What else can I do to look and sound more natural on camera? Well, think about how people talk. I mean, they don't talk in one long, fast, rapid fire sentence. There are pauses, occasional looks away from eye contact, although don't overdo that one, and other things that make people human. Don't forget to inject some of that into your on-camera performance, but make it natural. Occasional gestures are okay, but not to emphasize every single phrase and syllable. Use them sparingly, as you would if you were speaking with someone at a party. Right. I actually stumbled on this and included it in an episode on teleprompters. I just didn't quite know how to explain it like Craig did. Another question, Craig, how about subject matter? Is there some advice you can give us on writing your own scripts? Please, get right to the point. If you're speaking extemporaneously... Extemporaneously means carried out with little or no preparation. Impromptu. If you're speaking extemporaneously, don't waste your viewer's time with details or background that they don't need. Just get to the point. Similarly, if you're writing a script to present on camera, get to the meat quickly. The public has a really short attention span, so don't waste it. I've been guilty of this. Sometimes I talk on and on to my viewers trying to drive some point home and rethinking it. I think better some card or some insert or something. Just saying this point is important instead of me going on and on would really help. Finally, unless you're doing a yell and sell commercial pitch, speak in a conversational tone. Speaking loudly or trying to fill the room will immediately disconnect you from the connection you're trying to make with the viewer. Also, guilty as charged. Here's my next question. Can you really make a living doing voiceover work? Well, you can, but it takes a really long time. I've been doing it for more than 30 years, and while other areas of the business make me money, voiceover is still not a full-time gig for me. I mean, if I marketed myself and really worked at it, though, it would be, but... I just wear too many other hats, director, editor, videographer, writer, to devote my full time to it. And keep in mind with on-camera work and with voiceover, there's a ton of competition out there and also a lot of rejection. 
Most voiceover work is done through a custom audition of the client's script. Now, this is important. The client will develop a feeling about your voice the second you begin talking. You generally only have five to seven seconds to nail what the client is asking for before they press delete and move on to the next demo. Now, for that reason, many auditions that I thought I nailed, I didn't get. The client was just looking for something other than my voice that day. I think this also has a lot of value to filmmakers. They spend their time and money making something they think someone will enjoy. They post it or show it and get comments that are less than flattering, or it doesn't get the views they thought. I guess the lesson here is, so what? Maybe people weren't looking for what you were offering that day. Jeff Daniels once said something like, auditioning is my work. Booking a job is gravy. You really have to approach auditioning 100% for every audition you do and really try to nail what the client is asking for and then be prepared to be rejected. It's just part of the career. Give everything you do your all. Good point. I've always found I can count on a small percentage of people not liking what I've created, a film or video or whatever. I just remember that there's a large percentage of people that do like what I've made, so I just don't care. I just move on. Oh, and nowhere is this statement more appropriate. Don't quit your day job. Right. Craig, are there special tools or drills one can do to look or sound more natural in front of the camera? Well, I use ear prompter for almost everything I do. I've seen and heard about these things, and it it never made sense to me. Ear prompter is handy. You record your script into a digital recorder, then you feed it into your ear with a wireless earpiece. It's an expensive system. The ones I use cost about $600, so you want to practice with hardwire earbuds first to see if you can do it. You have to be really mindful of how your eyes look. Many people I've seen using ear prompter have a dead, glazed over look in their eyes because they're concentrating so hard. That's never a good look. <laughs> that seems really hard, listening to yourself while you're trying to speak on the camera. Well, I've been doing it so long, ear prompter is second nature to me. Now, teleprompter is different. It's hard to find a teleprompter operator who gets it. Very frequently, they're ahead of you or even worse, behind you. And it's hard to look natural when that happens. If you have to do teleprompter, get really familiar with the script. So if the operator falls behind, you can still fake it until they catch up. So you read it to yourself over and over and over? Well, what I do is practice in front of a mirror, making sure that my facial expressions and eye movements, along with any gestures, look natural. I've been a director for a long time, so I know what to look for in talent presentations. But even if you're just getting started, you can watch yourself in the mirror and get a really good feel for how you're doing. Great tip. I used to think actors were really vain in front of the mirror doing their lines over and over. This makes more sense to me now. Also, it helps to practice in front of a camera. You can use your phone camera or any other little video camera to record yourself. Do that and then wait a few days before you look at it. Your fresh eyes will be able to spot more mistakes or things you'd like to do better. Then do it again. There's nothing like practice and doing it in front of a camera at home, if you can, is always a good idea. That's a really good point. I know as an editor, when I walk away from the project I'm on and I come back later to it, it really helps me to look at it with new eyes. I also know everybody I know that's a professional, they practice a lot. Okay, here's something I really wanna know. Is there some trick to make your voice sound better? Not that I know of. Taking care of your instrument would be a good idea, I guess. I use Loquat tea that I make from a syrup that's available on Amazon. It helps to smooth out my voice, especially after a long day of voiceovers. I have no idea what loquat syrup is, so I'll look it up on Amazon and I'll put a link in the description below for anybody that's interested. But really, it's most important to sound like yourself, and here's why. If you're trying to make your voice deeper or stronger or better, a discerning client will hear that every time. They can tell you're not being natural. Okay, but how do I know my voice is gonna fit into what the client is looking for? Don't I need range? Think of this. What if they happen to be looking for the sound your regular voice makes? You'll lose the job if you're trying to impress them with some other voice you think you can do. Be yourself, be yourself, be yourself. Right, I have heard this from other professionals. A few people have commented that I'm too energetic or too over the top or too this. 
or to that. And uh, I just don't care. I'm just being myself. And I will apologize for being, well, me. I'm not everyone's cup of tea. Having said that, I'll say this. If you think you have the right delivery for the job and your voice isn't exactly what the client specified, audition anyway. You never know. Sometimes clients don't know what they really want until they hear it. And your out-of-the-box audition might be just the ticket. I don't know about you, but that was really helpful advice. If you get a moment, give Craig a shout out. I've included links to his website and his social media sites in the description below. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. No, seriously, did he, did he not thank me for being here so I could thank him back? What is the deal with that? I mean, does he have any idea how important I think I am? I mean, I sell credit card protectors on television, for God's sake. <laughs>